Hey, what's up everyone? This episode, it's update time. We're going to go into the tank, we're going to check out some of the fast growers, some new pieces that are in the tank, as well as some news about the fish, which is where the one piece of bad news comes in. So with that being said, let's get to it. <music> So like I said in the opening, uh, we're going to go check out the tank. We're going to see the corals that uh, I did some housekeeping in the tank. So there's some corals that have been moved around, hopefully for the better. There are some new corals in the system, as well as uh, we're going to take a look at some of the fast growers in the tank. Also, there's one p little piece of bad news um, that was kind of shocking this week, it, and uh, we'll get to that. So before we go to the tank, here's a quarantine tank with a little different flair to it. This is actually a tank that's in Scotty's room. Um, it's basically going to be a fish-only tank, so not only his fish will go in it, but um, to start it off, it'll probably be a quarantine tank for the big tank inside, uh, just so... Um, I don't want to put any fish in my tank that hasn't been quarantined and is good to put in the large reef. We'll get into a full video on this tank in a future episode. So let's go inside and check out the update. As you can see, the Hollywood Star is really starting to cup up and plate. And I moved the other half to this side of the tank. You can see the effects of it being shaded out. It's got that brown area and the green edge where the color is. The color was getting um, all the light while the green was getting shaded out. That should grow in and be fine in a matter of uh, a weeks or months. So we'll just keep track of that and see how that's turning out. As you can see on the upper portion of the tank, there is the red Montipora. And you can tell how just how big this has grown in and plating out. And it's really turned out to be a really nice piece. So. Super excited about that. Right here we have some new coral that's been added to the tank. What I did is when I was over at Fisher Hex's house, I was able to pick up this purple Monty. And this is a Fish of Hex Millie right here that's really, really taken off. It's really been a super nice piece in the tank. I can't wait for it to grow out. Uh, there's a lot of colors in it, more than you can see right now by the camera. So uh, this is the area I've decided to put most of a lot of my acros that do well in this in the middle of the tank. This green and blue tipped acro is also a Fisher Hex coral. You can really take a better look at these. Uh, you go to his website and you'll see a lot of his pieces on sale. I definitely highly recommend um, coral from him because again these are tank raised this is not farmed so a lot of these corals will do well in your tank because of the fact that they are in a system uh, prior to purchase now right here is the space odyssey acro from worldwide corals I moved it from where it was uh, and it seems to be coloring up a lot more here it's right next to something that I would never think I or have thought that I would ever have in my tank, but that is a leather. It's a small frag of a leather, but the neon green color I could not pass up. And seeing the parent colony at Aquarium Care Center, uh, I really have high hopes for that piece. Going across the middle of the tank, you see the Barney Coral's doing well. It's polyped out and growing higher and bigger than ever. As you can see right there, it's only got about three, four inches till it reaches the surface, but it's it's sprouting new heads. And you can see a lot of the, the green fluorescent is gone from it. Um, again, talking to Jason Fox, when the coral is not getting enough light, it does fluoresce green. So right here is a, a look at the Jason Fox Barney Coral. And it's a look that I really don't show that often, but I had to show it because of the, the fact that um, the amount of growth that's come off this side is ridiculous. 
As you crush it down the rock, you can see some of the, the little buds coming off that should be future sticks. This is another fish of hex coral. This is the uh, green encrusting monty. And you can see now that it's starting to grow out and up from the rock. The tips are really, really starting to color up bright, bright green. Uh, again, it's, it's kind of hard to see with the light, but really unbelievable growth has been happening with this coral. As you can see, the maize brain and the, the birthday cake coral doing well as usual. Right here on the shelf that houses some of the higher end zoas and pallies, um, they're really growing. The Fiji fires have taken off. The other chaos are really doing well as well as the Sunny D's and the worldwide coral Pandora corals. As you can see, have put on a lot more heads, a lot more polyps are coming out of that now. So I'm thrilled about that. Now the Euphelia section is basically a part of the tank that hasn't been changed very much. Uh, just recently, and when I was doing some of the housekeeping that I talked about, I moved this coral so I can put this section of Hollywood Stunner over here, and it would grow without being touched or stung by the other ones. Uh, the Pakoda coral from Aquarium Kiss, and it's really doing fine. Keep sprouting heads, and I'm really excited about its potential in the tank since it's been in the tank for a little while now, and it's not uh, starting to go downhill. It's actually going uphill, so um, as far as the Ghani's concerned, uh, keep your fingers crossed and hopefully that'll do well. Now, here is the piece of bad news. As you can see, as you look at the frog spawn, there is one clownfish. And some, some, at some point last week, I did notice that the onyx clown was no longer in the tank and no longer swimming around. So I can only assume that either she jumped out of the tank or she died in the tank and the cleanup crew did their thing. But either way, I have one clownfish left and that needs to change. So a trip will be scheduled soon to probably Aquarium Kiss and where I'll go and pick up um, either a single clown or maybe a, a couple of clowns. Um, hopefully something different, something new. Um, and they will pair up because I feel really bad for this little guy. So just stay tuned for um, any news about new the new clownfish. Rock flower anemones are really doing well, as well as the night before Christmas favia, which was moved down here when I put the SPS on that shelf. The red mushrooms are really doing good. There's actually now seven. Uh, as you can see here, there is two here on this rock, two little babies on that rock, and the original three. Uh, so well on the way to having this rock all filled up with uh, mushrooms. Right back here you can see what's left of the neon green candy cane. I put them back here to keep them just kind of in a um, kind of a soft flow area of the tank away from things so they wouldn't get beat up. Uh, these two different frags are really doing well and hopefully they'll be established. Intentions are still to have that one frag um, banked over at Billy's tank. Okay, so now over to the A-cans. You can see the A-cans are all doing well and coloring up really, really nicely. Uh, this whole entire section of A-cans are really, really doing well, including the pink ones uh, that we put in the tank as an experiment, the orange um, A-cans, the orange and green ones are really doing well. And the only thing I could really say is that I would guess the feeding regimen I have them on uh, lighting and water parameters are, are just perfect for them because they're really, really doing well in the tank. There you see the Rostas. They're doing fantastic on that rock. Moving across, you can see the Blastos. Now the babies are becoming more and more prevalent and you can see them really well. Neon green Favia, the Fungia plate in the back is doing uh, really nicely as well as the Garden. Still growing strong. The purple and green candy cane is doing awesome in its new spot. The A-can Barabanki is really doing nicely and you can see more and more of the polyps coming out of the side of it. Button Scully, this time this started as just a hitchhiker on another frag, has turned into a nice piece of coral. You can see the, the, the green band around the mouth and the speckles on the side. It's really a nice piece. Now, of course, 
Finishing up coral is, what would it be without the one that can't fit inside the frame that well? And this is the rainbow trachea. Always um, doing well in the tank. It's eating like a horse and um, is really truly one of the show pieces in my tank. Fish wise, uh, besides the problem with the clownfish, everybody else is doing well. Ocean is still being a pain in the neck and going after the yellow tank. But um, for now, he's remained in the tank. You can see in the back, there's one of the blue-eyed cardinals and the cleaner shrimp in their little car wash that's over here. Um, loving life. When the lights go out, they do come out onto the rock and go traveling all over the place. But during the, during the time when the lights are on, they're in there and they're staying in there. Moving up above the tank, I haven't really done a formal review of these lights yet, but this is the Ocean Revive T247s. Uh, I've had them above the tank for about a month, month and a half, maybe two at best. And I will be doing a formal review of these lights uh, very soon. I am pleased with their performance in that my corals have really taken off since I put them up there. Better than the, the black boxes that I had up there prior. Uh, but I'll go through the good and bad of them um, in a later video. Uh, just right now, um, as far as blues, I run my blues at 65% and my whites are on during the day uh, at around 15. I know they're supposed to be about 12 to 16 inches off the water, but right now I have them about nine and a half, nine, nine and a half inches off the water. So the percentages of intensity that I'm running them out at uh, is really making the coral respond to it. So uh, again, once I fully uh, feel comfortable in doing a review on those, that will be coming out. So that's gonna be it for this update uh, for this week. If you uh, are not subscribed to the channel, please hit, feel free to hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and comment down below. And as always, this is Scott, and I will see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.